Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at some more formatting. In the previous video we saw how to do some basic text formatting in Excel. We saw how to change the font, how to change the size of the font, how to change the color. And in, we're going to continue with some basic formatting in this, not just looking at formatting the font, uh, but actually some other basic formatting as well, such as using the fill color. Uh, for filling the actual cells that we have in our worksheet. And we're also going to look at something called the Format Painter as well, which is very, very, uh, very, very useful and a real time saver. So as you can see, I've opened up a brand new blank workbook in Excel. It's called Book One. And as always, in versions of Excel from 2016 on, and possibly earlier, um, we always have one new worksheet called Sheet One. You can see it down here. So we have our columns and our rows, and we know that we can type anything that we want in terms of data, in terms of either text or numbers. Uh, into any of the cells. So I'm going to type in today's day. I'm going to type in some numbers. As you can see, I'm just typing the numbers and text in. I'm going to type my name in. I'm going to type the word hello in just to get some data in there. It doesn't really matter what the data is because I'm going to show you how to format it now. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit. Um, you can zoom in at any stage on an Excel worksheet. There are a couple of ways you can do it. You can use the zoom uh, slide down here to actually zoom in 10% at a time. You can click and drag it as well if you want to, but you can also click on the plus sign and the minus sign to zoom in or out or 10% at a time. I'm going to hold down my control key on my keyboard in the bottom left hand corner of my keyboard and I'm going to push the mouse wheel away from me. And when you have control held down, pushing the mouse wheel away from you zooms into the worksheet and pulling the mouse wheel away from you will zoom out from the worksheet. I got those mixed up. I always do that. I beg your pardon. <laughs> pulling the mouse wheel, pushing the mouse wheel away from you zooms in and pulling the mouse wheel towards you zooms out. It's kind of counterintuitive, I know, and that's why I always mix them up. Um, regardless, you need to hold down control when you're doing this though. So hold down control, push the mouse wheel away from you to zoom in, pull it towards you to zoom out. I find that is, is probably the handiest way if you just want to zoom in quickly to see what you're doing better. And that will work in a lot of Microsoft applications as well, such as Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or in a lot of browsers as well, not just Microsoft browsers like Chrome and so on. So it's just to give us an, a better look at what we're doing here. So remember from our previous video, we saw that we could do a lot of things with regard to the font. I've left clicked on cell A1. That's now my active cell. You can see it up here in the name box. I'm going to make it size a little bit bigger so I've uh, bumped it up to 14 points and I'm going to bold it and I'm also going to left click on the down arrow and I'm going to select another color from the theme colors. I'm not going to bother creating my own color. We saw how to do that in the previous video by clicking on more colors but I'll just select a nice shade of blue here and finally I'll, I'll italicize it as well okay just just to mix and match uh, things up. So we know that we can do that. I'm just uh, clicking and dragging my column to make it a bit bigger. We'll be doing that shortly. We'll be looking at adjusting column widths. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to change the fill color of my cells. As you can see, the default fill color for cells in Excel is white and the default uh, text color is black and the default uh, color for anything you put in, whether it's text or numbers, is black. And that makes sense because black against white is a very good contrast. It's easy to read black text against a white background. But you may want to mix it up a bit and make it a bit more stylistically interesting, a bit more aesthetically pleasing, if you like. You don't have to do this. It's not going to change any of the data in your cells. It's just going to change the appearance of the data in the cells. So one of the things that we can do, as we've already seen, is change the fonts and the colors and so on. And we can bold and italicize and underline our fonts. But we can also change the fill color of the cell. And there are a number of ways of doing it, but probably the easiest way of doing it is to use this little guy up here. This is called fill color. Don't forget your tool tips will appear whenever you hover your mouse over any of the tools on your toolbar, on your ribbon toolbar, under any tab. I'm on the home tab now. When you hover your mouse over any of these tools, a little tool tip will pop up and tell you what that tool will do. And again, remember from our first video as well, whenever you see an arrow pointing down to the right of a tool means that there are other options associated with that tool. And we can click on that drop down arrow or that arrow to create a, or to produce a drop down menu from which we can see the other options. This is very, very similar in fact to uh, the options that we have for changing our text. We can choose different colors for our text here. You can see a little preview of what it would look like. Similarly, when we click on our down arrow here and we select a fill color, you can see that it's filling or will fill the cell with the color that I'm selecting. So I'm going to click on 
something like a light gray and that's it that's all there is to it to selecting a cell and changing its fill color I'll do the same with cell A2 but I'll pick a different color this time this time I'll go with the green and as you can see similarly with the with the text color the, the most recently used color will always appear under the fill bucket by default it's yellow when you start a new workbook or new worksheet um, but in this case because I've selected green as the previous color green is now the most recently used color I'll left click on cell A3 and I'll select another color, I'll select yellow and as you can see yellow is now if I wanted to uh, change A4 to yellow as well I don't need to click on the drop down arrow all I need to do is click on the fill color uh, tool itself and that will automatically implement whatever the most recently used color was so that's all there is to filling our cells now you might notice that as you've done that these grid lines here we call these grid lines, these lines that run up and down and across the screen these are called grid lines and they're there really just to separate the cells visually so that we can easily see uh, the difference between cells A1 and A2 and B A1 and B1 and so on and so forth. I'm just going to quickly turn off the grid lines and show you how difficult it would be. Uh, sometimes it can be very very difficult to, to differentiate between the cells if the grid lines are not turned on. So by default they are turned on. In some instances you may want to turn them off and we'll be seeing how to do that uh, in a later video. I'm going to turn them back on though for, for right now. And as you can see when you change your cell color it turns off the grid line in that particular cell. This is something that you may not want so we're now going to have a look at applying borders to our cells. So that was the, the applying fill color to the cells, changing the color that fills our cells. In this section we're going to look at how to use what's known as the Format Painter. Format Painter is a very, very, very useful tool in Microsoft Excel and also in Word as well and in PowerPoint and you'll see it to some extent as well in Microsoft Access. It's a real labour saving tool. Uh, it can save you an awful lot of work when it comes to formatting. So I'll give you a brief example of how it works. I'm going to create a brand new blank workbook and I'm going to zoom in again using my control and I'm pushing the mouse wheel away from me to zoom in. And again, I'm just going to type in a couple of numbers. I'm going to type in my name. I'm just going to type in the word hello. Okay, so we have a combination of text and numbers. I'm going to create uh, some formatting in cell A1. I'm going to left click on cell A1. And I'm going to do the following. I'm going to left click once on the B for bold. I'm also going to italicize it. I'm going to left click on the down arrow beside my font color. And I'm going to select, I'll select red. I'll also make the font a little bit bigger, not too big, I'll go up to 20. And finally, I'm going to change the font itself. And it doesn't matter what font I select. As you can see, I'm left clicking on the scroll bar in the font list and I'm just scrolling down through by keeping my mouse button held down and dragging the mouse down. And I'll change it to this one here, Matura MT Script. Capitals, okay. So that's uh, about five, six things that I did to the content of cell A1, to cell A1 itself. Now let's imagine I wanted to do the same thing to what was in cell A3. I'd have to go through the same sequence of steps again. I'd have to bold and italicize and font color and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's, it's, it's kind of, it's a bit laborious and it's a bit cumbersome. So instead what we can do is we can use what's known as a format painter, which is very, very useful. And you'll see it up here in the clipboard group on the home tab. Don't forget these groups of tools that are grouped together under each tab on the ribbon toolbar are referred to as uh, groups and in the clipboard group we have a bunch of tools that are logically related, logically connected. So things like cutting and copying and pasting which we'll be looking at in the next section and the format painter as well are all kind of logically related because they're connected to copying and pasting things. So I'm going to show you the sequence for using the Format Painter. And here's the trick. You left click on the cell which has the formatting that you want. You left click once on the Format Painter button. And when you do, you'll notice this animated line border around the cell that you have selected and, and on which you've clicked on the Format Painter. And when you move your mouse into the middle of the screen, you'll see that it looks the same, but there's a little paintbrush beside it, indicating that the Format Painter has now activated. And what the computer has done is it's copied the formatting 
for this cell. And if I want to then apply that formatting to cell A3, all I do is left click once on cell A3 and you can see that the formatting has now been applied to cell A3. The H in this um, font in Matura MT script looks a bit weird. Uh, that's all that's going on there. But all of the formatting that I had here, the bolding and the italicizing, the size and the font, the color and so on, it was all applied to cell A3 with one mouse click. So that's very, very useful. Uh, I'm just going to go over to the C column now and I'm just going to type in some numbers. Again, it doesn't really matter what number I type in. I'm going to click on cell C1 and again I'm going to do some formatting. This time I'm going to fill the cell with a, a different colour. So I'll click on my fill colour tool in the font group and I'm going to select, I'll select a very dark colour. Now remember what I was saying in the a previous, uh, or the section before last, I was talking about how if you have a, a, a dark background you really do want to have a bright colour. So this is a bit dark, too dark uh, to read the, the number against. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the colour of the font. I've changed the fill colour of the cell, now I want to change the, the font colour that's used in this cell. So I click on the down arrow beside my font colour menu and I'm going to select white. So now it's much easier to read. I'll do some other things here, I'll bold it, I'll italicise it. Again I'm going to change the font to Algerian uh, and I'll change the size. Now let's imagine I wanted to do all of these cells in the same way. Okay, I want to apply this formatting to all of these cells. If I click on Format Painter, don't forget the, the sequence is click on the cell which has the formatting you want, click on Format Painter and then click on the cell to which you want to copy the formatting. So I've left clicked, but now if I click on the other cells I, I notice that the formatting isn't being copied. And that's because if you click on the Format Painter once, you can only apply it to one cell or selection of cells. If you click away then, the Format Painter is turned off. I'm just going to undo that and show you again. So I've selected the cell which has the formatting I want, I've selected, selected Format Painter, and this time I'm going to click on this cell down here. Great, it's copied the formatting, but now if I click on any of these cells, you can see that the Format Painter is no longer turned on. It's no longer activated or highlighted. So I'm going to undo that again. So there are two ways around this. What you can do is, again, go back. The starting procedure would be the same anyway. Left click on the cell which has the formatting you want. Click on Format Painter. And what you can do is you can click and drag using your mouse down along. So I'm left clicking on the first cell that I want to copy the formatting to. I'm holding my mouse button down and I'm dragging down all the way until I reach the last cell to which I want to copy the formatting. And then I'm releasing the mouse and you can see that the formatting has been copied to all of the cells that I clicked and dragged over. I'll do that again. Left click on the cell which has the formatting I want. Click on Format Painter. Left click on the first cell to which you want to copy the formatting, holding your mouse button down and then drag your mouse down to select the other cells and release. So that's one way of, of, of formatting or, or copying or painting, if you like, the formatting from one cell to other multiple cells. You can also do the following. What if I didn't want to do this cell and this cell, but I did want to do this cell, this cell, and this cell? In other words, I don't want these two, but I do want this and this and this to have this formatting. What we can do there is we can double left click on the Format Painter. And what that will do is it will keep the Format Painter on no matter how many times I apply the formatting. So if I left click here, and then I can left click here, and I could left click over here, and essentially the Format Painter will stay turned on until I do one of two things. I can either press the Escape key in the top left hand corner of my keyboard, or I can left click once on the Format Painter to turn it off. And now if I click on another cell, that formatting won't be copied. So I'm gonna undo that and show you again. I want to use the Format Painter to copy the formatting in this cell to multiple other cells, but not all of these, only certain ones. So I can't use click and drag because it will do it to all of them. So what I'm gonna do is double left click on Format Painter, one, two, with my left mouse button, and then click on the cells to which I do want to copy the formatting. And then when I'm happy that I've copied it to all the cells that I want, I'm now going to press the Escape key in the top left hand corner of my keyboard. You can see that the Format Painter is still turned on, it's still highlighted here, you can see the way it's shaded, and you can still see the animated border flashing 
around the cell from which I copied the formatting. Now when I press escape, the format painter is turned off. And if I click on any other cell, it won't adopt that formatting. So that's the format painter. It's an ex extremely, extremely useful uh, piece of uh, wizardry in Microsoft Excel and it's also in Word and it's in PowerPoint as well and it is in Access but you won't see it used very often in Access. Um, it's really just used for presenting or changing the style or appearance of our content. It does not change the, the content itself. This is still the number 4868, this is still the number 789 and so on and so forth. You can see the contents up here in the formula bar. Remember the formula bar always shows you the contents of whatever cell that you're actually on. So the number hasn't changed, all that's changed is its appearance. Secondly, it's very important to remember that the format painter isn't copying the content of the cell. It's copying the format that we've applied to that cell. So I'm not copying the number 4868, I'm copying the formatting that's applied to this cell which contains the number 4868. So in other words, the B, the I, the color, and so on and so forth. So hopefully that made sense. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to, uh, well, in the, in the description, you can see that there's a, a couple of links to some practice sheets because watching this stuff is great and all, but uh, nothing is a substitute for actually doing it. So there are some practice sheets in PDF format uh, at the, in the description uh, section of this video. Just click on the show more link uh, in the description of this video and you'll see that there are links to practice sheets that you can download in PDF format. So I'd urge you to do that. Uh, and they'll just take you through the steps, so just kind of variations on a theme. They're not difficult, but it's good practice because you learn by doing. But the videos are useful as well to, to go back over something if you're not really sure how to do something or if you can't really remember how it was done. It's a good visual uh, aid in order to show you how something was done. So that's the format painter. In the final section of this video, we'll look at borders and then we will be moving on to cutting, copying and pasting in the next video. But uh, we'll then move on to how to use borders, how to apply borders to individual cells or ranges of cells in Microsoft Excel. In the last section of this video, we'll look at how to apply borders, either to an individual cell or to a range of cells. Why might we need a border? By default, if you can see the grid lines here on my screen, you'll see them on your own screen as well if you're following along uh, in Excel. These are called grid lines and they're turned on by default in an Excel worksheet, but you can actually turn them off. I'll be showing you how to do that shortly and how to turn them back on as well. There may be various different reasons why you might want to do that. Also, when you're printing out a worksheet in Excel or part of a worksheet, if I show you file and print here, the grid lines are not turned on by default. Again, there may be multiple reasons why you might want them turned on or why you might want to leave them turned off. But a lot of the time what you'll do is you'll apply your own specific borders to cells. Okay, you'll design your own borders. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. It's very easy to do. I've got cell A1 selected and up here in the borders or rather in the font group on the home tab there is a borders tool and you can see there's a drop down arrow to the right of it which means that there are other uh, border selections or border options that I can choose from. When you create a new workbook the the, the it's very like the, the font color and the fill color uh, tool. Don't forget from our previous sections the default color when you use when you create a new workbook is going to be yellow for your fill color and it's going to be red for your font color but then as you start selecting other colors for your font or other colors for your fill tool the most recently used color is going to be is going to appear underneath those two uh, tools. Similarly with the borders uh, tool whenever you create a new workbook the default border is going to be bottom border and a, a helpful little tool tip shows up to, to show you what border is going to be applied to the cell when you click on the border uh, tool. So that's what I'm going to do now. I've left clicked on cell A1 and I'm going to click on the border tool and it's going to apply a bottom border to cell A1. Except I can't see it. Reason for that is that Excel always has a green border around the current active cell anyway, so it's kind of obscuring the bottom border. If I left click away, you can just about see a pencil thin border there at the bottom of cell A1. If I go to file and print, you'll be able to see it much more easily. There it is there. That's our bottom border. So that's all there is to applying a bottom border. I'm going to go over here to the C column now, type in another number. I don't need to have uh, content in the cells, I just want to, I think it's easier to show you the borders when there's content in there. And this time I'm going to select top border. 
So if I left click away from cell C2, you can see that there is a top border applied to cell C2. Now, if I click on cell C2 again and I go, you might think, well, I want a top and a bottom border. If I click on bottom border, you can do that. Excel reasons that you want to have a top, uh, or assumes that you want to have a top and a bottom border, and it's going to apply both of them there. It would probably be easier, though, to do maybe one of the following. You can have, there is a top and bottom border here like this, and what that will do is it will do the same thing in one click, rather than first applying a top and first applying a bottom. We can also apply an outside border, okay, what we call an outside border, and that will draw a border all around the cell that you've selected. So all I did there was I left clicked on the cell and I looked for outside border. What that means is it will draw a border outside the cell, all around the four corners, which is very, very useful. Uh, there are other border options in there as well. For instance, a thick outside border. Let's have a look at that. It's pretty much the same, except it's a thicker border. So if you were really trying to draw emphasis or, uh, or draw attention to something, you might want a thicker border. Uh, there's a top and double bottom border. So it's kind of hard to see there, but you can see that there is a double border down here and so on and so forth. So I think you get the idea, okay? You can also draw borders and you can erase borders and you can change the line colors for borders, but we don't need to go into that much detail with the borders. All we need to do is know how to apply the, the inbuilt borders that are in um, our list of borders down here, okay? Now, if you, we want to apply to a range of cells, we need to be careful. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to clear all this and I'm going to type in the following. I'll just type in some numbers and I'll type in some numbers here. And finally, I'll type in some numbers here. All right. So I want to apply an outside border to all of these cells, these nine cells, okay? So you might think, well, if I click on cell A1 and go down to cell C4, sorry, there are 12 values actually, not nine. So if I go from cell A1 down to C4, I've left clicked on cell A1, I've kept my mouse button held down and I've dragged down to C4. That's how you select a range of cells. Don't get caught out because the first cell that you clicked on will always appear white. That's kind of the point where you started from but you do have all of these cells selected okay they are all selected and you can see uh, that there's a green border drawn around all of your selected cells but the first cell in your range will always be white uh, just in case you're wondering i want to apply as i said an outside border that's a border outside each of the cells in this range of cells that i've selected but if i do the following if i go to outside border and then click away Notice that it hasn't done what I've wanted. It's left clicked on, or rather it's selected the outside border for all of the cells. So I've got an outside border drawn around that range of cells and that's not what I wanted. I wanted each individual cell to have a border outside it. So I'm going to undo that. I've got them selected again. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to all borders. Left click on all borders. And if I left click away, you probably saw it anyway. What that's done is it's done an outside border for each border in the range of cells, or sorry, for each cell in the range of cells that I had selected. So I'll just do that again. Don't forget, I want an outside border around each of these cells. So I left clicked on cell A1 and down to cell C4. So that's my 12 cells selected. I went up to my borders too, left clicked on my down arrow and went to all borders. And that gave me exactly what I was looking for. Finally, before we end this video, I'll just show you how to turn off borders. You may want no borders. You might want to turn off borders either on individual cells or ranges of cells. I'm going to turn off the, the borders for all of these cells. So I'm going to left click on cell A1 and again, go down to cell C4. And to turn off borders, it's very easy. It's the same option as well for an individual cell. Here, I'm just doing it to a range of cells. So I've got my range of cells selected. I left click on the down arrow and I simply go down to no border. That's it. Now, no border, don't forget, isn't going to turn off your grid lines because borders and grid lines are two different things. We just turned off the borders that we had turned on. So that's all there is to borders. OK, that's all we need to know about applying borders. Um, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. In the next section, we're going to start looking at cutting, copying and pasting. 
and how important it is to be able to cut and copy and paste from cell to cell and from ranges of cells from ranges of cells and also from sheets to sheets within the same workbook we can copy and paste or cut and paste uh, content from sheet to sheet and we can also cut and copy from an individual workbook to another workbook so from one file to another so it's very very powerful and uh, very useful to be able to do so cutting and copying and pasting comes next have a look at the revision exercises as well in the description for this video and if you have any questions at all uh, just drop me a line at my email address so hope um, that you're following along with these okay and that it's all making sense so thanks for watching and i'll see you shortly in the next video